This work's very important to me. It's, it's, uh, and we're, I'm fortunate enough to be paid to keep these old cars alive. And, um, you know, I should probably have been born a long time ago, man, because, you know, I'm an old analog uh, way of thinking type dude. And I just love these old cars. And I just want to keep them alive, man. All right, this is my shop here, here at Martin Brothers. This is still the kind of the main shop where all the metal fabrication equipment is and metal fab work goes down and you see some of the projects going on here. We got this 41 DeSoto here. This was kind of an ugly duckling project. Came in from a really good customer and it's got all kinds of work just to kind of de-uglyify this thing and uh, it's still in the process, kind of long-winded project. You know, fortunately, we're, we're to the point now where we kind of handpick what we want to do. You know, we get people that want to build, you know, we got customers, you know, there's 20 Camaro builds out there, or there's this one Riviera, or there's this one something, you know, something, something that we haven't done. So it's kind of nice we can kind of cherry pick what we haven't built yet. And we, you know, we kind of live vicariously to our customers, man, because, Obviously, we couldn't afford to build all these cars ourselves, but we get the opportunity to build them. So it's really cool. You know, we'll handle everything from that point. We do the paint, we do the, the fab work, uh, interior here. Um, everything's done pretty much here, so it's kind of nice. We can we've got a really great group of guys and kind of lean on each other. But if we can have it under one roof, it just seems like we have a little more control over everything. There's a Nova project we got going on here. But we started with a pretty nice car. Uh, we built our own frame for it, built new floors. The customers got a big, crazy supercharged motor that had to come way back. So we had to move it, firewall back. Everything had to kind of come back, kind of like a, almost like a drag car, you know? But a lot of uh, just engineering, trying to get everything to fit in this little car, you know? This is a uh, 50 Chevy truck. We actually do a lot of these frame swaps. This one here's got a roadster shop frame in it. And uh, so we're doing a lot of that stuff where people are taking their old rides kind of update them where they can enjoy driving them a little, you know, better handling characteristics, a little more performance. We've got a nice frame under it, nice old motor. We'll do some interior upgrades. And then man, just having a nice driver, you know, so. I don't really have a metal shaping background. I mean, I'm 100% self-taught. I was just fascinated with it as, as a little kid and, you know, looking at a car and wondering how'd they make that door? How'd they make that hood? How'd they do that? And I can just remember how in the hell did it? And people try to explain it to me. Nobody really knew. As I got older and wanted to work on my own cars, so I thought, man, I'm gonna teach myself. And so, you know, I bought a little panel beaten bag and some hammers. You know, look in the old magazines, try to find some books. You know, there was no internet at the time. I had a buddy that had a chassis shop a lot older than me and he was we did a lot of street racing and I met him through the street racing scene and he let me come to the shop and hang out and I had a car I was working on he said bring it up here I'll show you how to do some things man and this really cool project here 65 Riviera Chad's working on right here sitting on a roaster shop frame and uh, just killer stance um, LS3 you can see the uh, floors have been blown out of it Chad fabbed up all new floors all new wheel tubs basically took the stop X frame out of the car, put a roadster shop frame, perimeter style frame, blew out the floors, mounted the body to the frame, kind of set the body where he wanted and just pretty much made 
all the floors and so it'll be a really cool car kind of a mild you know some mild body mods on it but just kind of true to form but just going to be a killer ride killer driver and the classic Riviera stance you know just some of the cool things Chad did this cool yeah. little vent right here 63 64 had the little the little scoops right there and we thought the 65 needed something uh 59 Impala over here yeah same thing it was uh sitting on a roaster shop frame car came in from the northeast and it had actually been in Hurricane Sandy this thing was underwater under salt water <laughs> and uh so it's had needless to say it had a lot of rust repair yeah, yeah. and uh but it's coming out to be a really cool car man and and uh still a lot of work left to do to it but very cool car trying to make some forward progress on it i've always done paint work so i did lettering when i was young and as i got in my late teens i would do lettering pinstripe work and before there was vinyl and all this sort of thing, all the mini truck clubs, dirt trackers, everybody would have to have everything hand painted, man. So I would hand paint, you know, the name of somebody's show truck or the, the numbers on a dirt car, or the NHRA numbers on a drag car, that sort of thing. And, you know, amassed this big group of people that were into everything, off-road guys, dirt track, drag race, old school, customs, low riders. And all those people, I would draw something kind of education from that culture that car culture uh, my first car was 59 cadillacs kind of a custom and then i got into the street racing had a 78 trans am and uh, so the trans am i kind of really cut my teeth on i, I was trade for my parts man and and uh, traded for my motor my transmission but at the same time too i'd pick up knowledge from these old school dudes you know chassis shop guys motor guys transmission guys and try to learn something absorb it man and because you know i couldn't afford to you know, do all this stuff myself, I had to learn it. And I just was fascinated with every aspect of building that car. And I wanted to learn as much as I could to do it all myself. Yeah, here's our, the paint booth. We uh, started out with a paint booth out back and under the awning out back of the shop. Cause we were doing, you know, we'd use that booth for priming and stuff, but that was our main booth at first. And then we hooked up with the people from Colmet and we got this booth here and uh, it works out great. So we just kind of reserve it for the clear coating, for the base coat, all the clean work. You know, try to keep all the paint jobs clean, keep all the other stuff outside. But uh, when we first did this shop, everything was all in one building. And as time went on and allowed, we built some more buildings, so. So here's, a, you know, the metalworking department here. You know, everything pretty much happens right in here. Got all of our collection equipment that I've amassed over the years. You know, one of my old favorites is my whole hole punch machine right here. Yeah. Very cool little machine, nice manual machine. Uh, I got my tubing bender. I love this bender. It's just been very, you know, very versatile machine and, you know, been collecting up all the different tooling and everything. It's just a, just a great machine. It gets used a whole lot, yeah. I mean, we do the chassis, we do roll cages, we do all kinds of stuff with this thing. and. Just a bulletproof machine, really. Got our kick shrinkers. Got a Bailey tube notcher. Gets used a lot with the tube and bender. Yeah, my wheel is uh, handmade. Uh, I had an old metal ace kit that I bought the wheels years ago, probably 25 years ago. Built my own machine. Just wanted something super heavy duty. It's got a metal sombrero on it. It's everybody, it's our Spanish wheel. It's not our English wheel, man. So here in Texas, we got Spanish wheels, man. So. tools I started out with were actually uh, I had a MIG welder and um, I just had some cut off wheels and and uh, so I started with that and then I got a panel beaten bag and some hammers so I try to form stuff and uh, I even made my own sheet metal break years ago out of some heavy angle iron you know if I was making a wheel tub or something or I'm making a little console it was very basic and so I started out with these tools and then as I absorbed more you know, knowledge of the stuff. I'm like, okay, man, now I need this, I need this. If I really want to do shape this, or if I want to shrink this, I'm going to need this tool now. Just, you know, the more gear I collected, of course, the easier it got, you know, and, and, but still always trying to learn new ways to manipulate the metal. I mean, you never can learn enough. It's one of my favorite machines right here. RH-19, very cool machine. I love it. The, I love the, uh, shrinking dies on this thing so it's it just has real cool tight access other than my big power hammer the dies on that thing it's got you know tight little tight little dies so if you're doing some really 
drastic radius shapes or something man i love this machine it's kind of my go-to machine and then i can just basically come from that and go straight to the planishing hammer and get some really cool shapes out of this thing you can move it around the shop and a lot of really cool tooling for it it's like a little mini hammer really is man and and uh i just love this machine yeah i got a little tinsmith uh, notcher on there uh old lathe yeah, i think lathe. it's a 1950 uh, logan works great I think I bought it at a dude's garage sale for like 200 bucks or something, man. And Power Hammer's cool. It's just, a, it's a home-built deal. Um, the heads, I got it from a local dude who was taking these pieces and building a hammer. I think these are, yeah, it was all Mittler stuff, what the dude said, and, and uh, had it for a long time. It's been a great machine. You know, we're doing a lot of uh, muscle car stuff lately, and, and so you don't do a lot of shaping in those cars, man. But, you know, when you need the gear, you need the gear, it's man. Gotta there, right? It's got to be there. And yeah, I got some saws, got some old mills, got uh, my big uh, ring roller here. That thing comes in handy for all kinds of cool stuff. Got all kinds of cool different tooling for it. You know, it's one of those machines you don't need that often, but when you need it, you really need it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Pretty much have to have plasma cutter and uh, makes life so much easier. Um, you know, fabricating motor mounts, fabricating pretty much anything. Brackets, all about brackets, man. It's all about time is money. The Bailey equipment I got is pretty much older gear and it's, it's uh, stood the test of time. Obviously, I'm always trying to acquire more stuff, but I've really got everything dialed in and that gear has been with me a long time and, and it still does the job. It does, it, it's, it's uh, stuff performs every day, man. And right. here's one of my favorite machines here, little Bailey. Uh, tube notcher right here. Yeah. Chris Rush came out with this machine a while back. And so what's so cool about this machine is, you know, the way this thing clamps onto your tubing. It's like you can take a piece of bent tubing and this thing will clamp it, you know? So it's really cool, man. It's a very versatile machine, you know, very affordable. You know, if you can't afford the high dollar notchers, man, this is this has got to be one of the most awesome tubing notchers, man. You know, the way this machine clamps the tubing it's so cool you can take a bent piece at a different radius different radiuses will fit in there and so you can kind of cut at different angles so it's really cool um, you know how this thing moves around so you can just come around you know, hit the tubing from different angles just super killer machine man all world all these fabricators in the car world hot rod world but you know Bailey's kind of a big kind of a big deal to all of us you know, and some of these industrial companies, man, just are only focused on these giant corporations and giant manufacturing. And, you know, it just seems like Bailey's more focused. I mean, they're focused, they can handle the big corporation stuff too, but man, they still take the time out for the little guy, for the little shops like us, man, making little pieces of equipment that we can use that's still affordable. And, um, you know, it helps us, helps us move our, our you know, creativity and our business is forward, man. You know, what would my legacy be? I don't, I never really thought about it, man, you know, because I, I think I'm going to be, you know, hopefully like Gene Winfield, I'm 90-something doing this stuff, not thinking of my legacy, man. Mm -hmm.